Ja, herzlich willkommen zu einer neuen Ausgabe SI Talk Interviewrunde Vancouver Oktober 2019. Escort Resources Derek White bei mir. Und äh, vielleicht können Sie noch erinnern, äh, wie ich zurückgekommen bin, habe ich gesagt, das ist einer der spannendsten Companies, die ich eigentlich hier gesehen habe. Und deswegen habe ich auch äh, den Markt äh, genutzt und habe ein bisschen was eingekauft, wie sich jetzt im Endeffekt herausgestellt hat, ein bisschen zu früh. Ändert aber, glaube ich, nichts an der Story. Hoffe ich zumindest. Ich hoffe, er erzählt mir gute News. Äh, so, das heißt, ich habe einen Conflict of Interest, äh, weil ich Aktionär bin. Thank you to have time, as I say in my German introduction. When we do our last interview, or the first interview in, in May or beginning of June, uh, I, I say to my subscriber, this is one of the most interesting companies that I saw uh, this whole trip. And that was the reason why I bought some shares. So I have now a conflict of interest. I'm a shareholder. Um, and I, I bought heard it you say that in German, so yes. I, I bought it too. High a little bit, uh, but it's mean for all the other people and also for me, it's maybe now a buying opportunity. Um, so what's happened in the last four months? I saw some good drill results coming up. So you do everything right. So what, what, do you have any idea why the share price not moving? Uh, yeah. So I mean, I'll speak to what we've done in the past four months and then talk a little bit about the share price. That's Perfect. Okay. Perfect. So the big activities for us this year um, were number one, uh, uh, we've run about a 50,000 meter drill program. And that program is divided into two parts. One part is uh, bringing the resources up to a reserve category so we can issue a feasibility study, mm -hmm. which we need for financing to restart the mine. Um, that's a, that's a, fair, a fair bit of drilling and that really took us till about the middle of September. So mm -hmm. um, we've completed that in the three key areas being Silver Coin, Big Missouri, um, and the Premier, um, and that, that's quite helpful. The second part of that drilling program is finding new areas mm -hmm. that are outside of resources, and we'll drill about 10,000 meters of exploration, and we'll complete that in about two weeks from now. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that was one big activity, really working on uh, identifying new areas to grow the resources. They may not make it into our first feasibility study, but they show that this property is highly prospective and it you know, has the ability to grow and then getting um, the drilling so that we can get reserves, so that we can do a feasibility study, which we're aiming to try and complete uh, in Q1 of this year. Um, so we, we need about another four months after the drilling's done to do all the mining engineering work to do, to do that. Um, the second big activity for us uh, was uh, progressing the, what we call Mines Act permit. Um, mm -hmm. So we were a permitted mine that needs to amend their permits back into active mm -hmm. status. That is actually quite a lot of engineering work. Um, and we've done, uh, we've, we've completed most of that. One of the delays we've had is a little bit on the tailings. We've had to change the design of the tailings a little bit, so we're probably going to take a few more months to get that ready, but um, we're focused on getting um, all of that uh, done by the end of the year as we get ready for the feasibility study. Mm -hmm. um, and then the third big thing that we did was we took the Red Mountain asset and we redid their feasibility study, recosted everything, and redid their mine planning. Um, and we've completed that right now, and we're just getting ready to uh, incorporate that into into the into the overall mine mm -hmm. plan. Mm -hmm. uh, and then finally, um, you know, we've also been working. We have a we have a, a non core asset, a gravel uh, mm -hmm. uh, mine. Yes, you and know. we've been working uh, with cement and concrete uh, manufacturers um, on a selling process to try and, and do that. We were hoping to complete that by the end of the third quarter. Um, it's taking us a little longer. They want a lot of samples, and we have to send those samples back for analysis, which we're doing right now, but um, we are progressing on. So those are the big things that we've done. And um, for a small company, you know, we're effectively, you have to think of this asset as a, a, it's like a bike wheel. We have a hub, which is the infrastructure, being the mill and the tailings and everything. And then we have four uh, mines around it that feed it. And um, it is a little complicated because we have to effectively do all this work on each one of those four areas. But by doing this, we're able to save a lot of capital in the long run. So it, it's, it's worth doing. Um, and some of these things just t have taken us a little longer than, than we've hoped for. In terms of the share price, I think there's a, a couple things that I would say um, that have been difficult for us. Uh, the first one is that as the gold price rises, there's been a lot of attention on gold investors to focus on production mm -hmm. or to focus on the ETF. And unfortunately, as a developer who's not yet in production, our story is a little bit um, 
I guess, deferred in terms of their interest. So usually what happens is, you know, the value proposition for the big producers as they rise up drops away and more investors come down. So we haven't seen a huge wave of new investors like maybe Barrick or Newmont has. Mm. And we hope as if the gold price stays high that that will change. Um, I think the second thing is we have a, a pretty big retail following. We have about 70% of our shareholders are retail. And they are very interested in what's going to happen tomorrow, like next week. Um, and they were much more interested on the expiration side of it. And they were concerned a little bit that, you know, we were doing too much engineering work, too much to building a new mine and not enough expiration. And we said, well, look, we, we really have to try and get the, 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 the key data done first, and then we'll start to work on the expiration. Um, and our share price actually came down a little bit, and it came up a little bit. Uh, we put out some new holes on some new areas because we think we have about 15 mm -hmm. different targets uh, that we're working on. We've had some pretty good results, so that's helped us a little bit. But generally, the exploration guys are, and more of the retail shareholders are much more focused on doing more exploration. And so we have about half our results, drill results to come out between now and December. And we're hoping that if we can continue to bring some more good exploration results, showing that there's new areas beyond just what we're doing for the mine, that mm -hmm. will help us. Um, and then thirdly, when, when you consolidate, like we have very quickly, so we, in a nine month period, really did three deals and we did two deals for shares. So we issued, you know, a lot of our shares to, to, to combine these entities. Um, a couple of those shareholders, let's just say, got themselves in some difficulty and they didn't have the liquidity and they were forced to sell our shares. And one of the problems we have is we have improved the trading liquidity. When we started here a little less than two years ago, this company would trade 25,000 shares a day. Now we're trading 200,000 shares a day. And so we've increased that by a factor of 10. And that, that greater liquidity has allowed or facilitated mm -hmm. for some of the retail guys who've been in the stock long before we've been involved to just want to get out. Mm -hmm. And we've had a hard time convincing people, uh, you know, on the, on the retail expiration side to say, look, this is really two things. This is a, a, a mine that's going to be developed with existing infrastructure and you get a free option on all the expiration upside we get. Or you can look at it as a very good expiration play where you get a free option on building a mine. And um, so I guess we're a little bit in what I've called develop developer's curse at the moment. Um, but we still think for long-term value, it's best for us to continue to work on the engineering and, and get towards what I would call a feasibility, financeable plan where we can go out there and, and finance to get the mine back into production to make money because ultimately, once we're in production, we believe that the price of the shares will, will rise. I um, absolutely agree with you. Uh, one question to this to this sellers from from what you get or what they get the shares uh, through these acquisitions and so on. Is this done or you, you think maybe there are more coming up? Um, we think the majority of it is done and you've seen the share price kind of stabilize at 60 cents. So, you know, for a lot of people, that's a pretty good deal right now because we're roughly half of where we uh, were before. Um, one of the sellers, uh, you know, indicated to us that he's, he stopped selling. It's hard for us to confirm that. But what we have, um, some of our institutional shareholders have really liked our story and have told us, look, if anybody out there decides they really want to sell or they don't like the story, um, we can consolidate that and we can find buyers for those shares. And so we have support, I think, to try and do that. Our biggest problem is just trying to connect with these people because mm. sometimes they don't this, do it you know I, they, even though I'd like to help them and we can get them a reasonable price if they don't talk to us we have no way of no way of doing that yeah. so we can't we can't know for sure but you know I, I'm hopeful that people see the value proposition here you know we're trading at a fraction of what the you know cash flow value of this could be and I appreciate we're not operating mine yet but we're well on our way we've done a lot of engineering work um, and as we start to bring these studies out and, and, complete, and do the Mines Act Amendment, I think, you know, the value starts to become more clear for people. No, that's, uh, I see absolutely also the value. That was also the reason why I buy, b bought some stock, um, and especially when we are in, in this kind of market. Uh, and uh, I talked this week with uh, another company. They have the same issue. They have all previous uh, investors. They're not coming to them to talk with them. They sell it into the market. They say that it's a liquidity event. We have now liquidity on market and sell it in. So that's that's happened. That's the stock market. Yeah. Um, so to, to summarize, it, it's mean that for the next um, three to, to six months, it's really it's really business. On one side, we get the feasibility study. On the other side, we get these exploration targets. Uh, and the, the drill results, results the from, drill results, from all the drilling. Uh, from more drilling. Um, then 
you will start the feasibility end of the year, or is it? No, we've been working on the feasibility. We originally were going to try and do it in stages where we were going to issue a PEA um, and all these things. And our, our tailings requirements got changed a little bit, Austin, because mm-hmm. we're dealing with the regulators as well. And so we were hoping to do that by the end of August, roughly speaking, and that's been delayed a little bit. For, so for us right now, um, most of the feasibility work is, is in yes. progress. Mm-hmm. And, and we would hope the biggest thing that we have to do is we, once we do all the infill drilling, we have to take all that data and take a resource and make it into a so reserve. reserve. And so that takes us about four months of additional piece. So all the work we've been doing will continue, plus we'll add those reserves in there. Um, and then we're able to issue a feasibility level, which is what we need for financing the mine. Okay, so that's mean in first half next year, you're looking for financing of, of the mine. Yeah. So, and how long it will take from after the financing to the... to the? Well, not really long. So the biggest thing, you know, uh, in because most of our stuff is already built, we're not really constructing anything. So we're refurbishing something. Um, the two critical items for us are the ball mill and the sag mill. And they take about eight months to deliver. And so one of the things we would like to do is uh, we're talking with some financiers, especially on project finance side, where they would allow us to order the ball mill and the sag mill ahead of time. Um, and re- really, even if we um, weren't able to use them, they could take security over that and, and, and sell it somewhere else. So those are probably the longest lead items. Mm-hmm. The actual construction or refurbishment of the mine is really only about six months. It's not very long. Mm-hmm. So the hope is, and then the other thing is, when we submit our Mines Act amendment permit, the regulators typically take between six and nine months to do that. So ideally, what we'd be have a position where we put out the feasibility study, start to arrange the finance, order the ball mill and the sag mill, wait for the final permit, and then do the construction so that in the first half of 2021, we would be back into production. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And this is maybe then a, a perfect timing, especially when you look at the market uh, that we are now really broke out on the, on the gold side, 1380. Uh, and, and hopefully, or oh, I'm... I, think we are now really in the second leg of, 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 of a new pool market and then we are much much higher level well that's just when, when, extra what, extra upside for us what what kind of level do you use of in the feasibility study which goal well the, the, the feasibility studies were generally being done at between 1250 and 1300 dollar gold but because the price has moved for so much now we're seeing them come out at 1400 dollar gold Mm-hmm. So somewhere between thirteen and fourteen hundred dollar gold is sort of where the market is at the moment. Okay, uh, Derek, I think it uh, was a great update. Uh, one update also for for the German investors. Uh, you are showing up also on the Edelmetallmesse in yeah. um, beginning of March, um, and and you have a German uh, geologist. Yes, uh, all all discussions uh, at this meeting will be in Deutsch. <laughs> I'll try and work on my Deutsch a little bit. I'll go talk to my wife again and. See if she can give me some more lessons. I hope I hope you talk uh, more uh, with your wife, not only in German. No, we talk in English, but she can speak both in German and English. When she's mad at me, it's usually in German. But uh, what I would say is, no, uh, um, uh, Lars is uh, from Berlin, and uh, he will be uh, there. I, I'm hoping to be there for part of it, but uh, please come and see us, and we can discuss everything in German. Perfect. Ja, das war doch jetzt ein guter Schlusspunkt, mit dem fange ich auch gleich an. Das Unternehmen ist am 8. und 9. November auf der Edelmetallmesse in München. Sie wissen es, äh, Sie, äh, Sie können jetzt, glaube ich, auch schon Gratiskarten davon äh, zeichnen auf der Webseite. Das heißt, Sie haben einen gratis Eintritt. Ähm, ja, und dort sind Sie auf Stand Nummer 22, soweit ich mich erinnern kann. Und Sie haben einen deutschen Geologen auch vor Ort, mit dem Sie dann über das Projekt auch sprechen können, beziehungsweise er kann Ihnen die Unternehmen dann dementsprechend vorstellen. Und das ist natürlich dann viel einfacher, wenn man das in Deutsch machen kann, als wie in Englisch. Aber kommen wir jetzt zurück nochmal auf das, was wir gerade besprochen haben. Als erstes würde ich mal die Fiese, Sie haben jetzt gebohrt, sehr viel. I think you say 15,000 meters so f- uh, in, in general. 50,000. Five, 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 50. 50 five well, meters. 15 was a little bit like yeah. 50,000 uh, yeah. uh, Bohrmeter haben sie gebohrt, wobei das meiste natürlich dafür hergenommen wurde, das Infill Drilling, also uh, damit man die Ressource von Ressourcen auf Reserven hochstufen kann. Das braucht man auch für die Feasibility Study und natürlich will die Börse, wenn man dann nachher in Produktion geht, sowieso Reserven sehen und nicht Ressourcen. Da hat man das meiste jetzt verwendet dazu, für dieses zu bohren. 
Wobei von diesen 50.000, äh, soweit ich mich richtig erinnern kann, 10.000 pro Meter verwenden sie für neue Targets. Das heißt, wir können dort auch mit neuen, äh, äh, hoffentlich sehr guten Ergebnissen rechnen und den Rest haben sie quasi für ihre bestehenden äh, Ressourcen verwendet, um diese in eine höhere Kategorie zu bringen. Das ist ein großer Teil einmal, man 50.000 Bohrmeter, muss man sich einmal vorstellen, das ist eine Menge, Menge Bohrmeter. Da können andere Firmen nur träumen davon, dass sie überhaupt so viel produzieren. Was heißt das jetzt allerdings? Sie müssen jetzt die Feasibility Study machen, das heißt die ganzen Bohrmeter, die dort reingekommen sind, die müssen jetzt natürlich abgetätet werden und das wird man hoffentlich bis Ende des Jahres oder Anfang 2020 schaffen, dann haben wir die Feasibility und die Feasibility braucht man auch deswegen, um die Finanzierung aufzusetzen, die dann im ersten Halbjahr 2020 ungefähr stattfinden wird und wenn alles so halbwegs vernünftig läuft, dann sind wir Mitte oder im ersten Halbjahr 2021 in Produktion. Warum dauert es so lang? Es ist ja sehr viel Infrastruktur da. Also warum dauert es nur so kurz, muss man eigentlich sagen, weil eben sehr viel Infrastruktur da ist und das, was am meisten oder am längsten braucht, sind also die, 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 die Ballmill, also die Mühle an sich, die brauchen ungefähr eine Vorlaufzeit vor acht Monaten. Das heißt, man spricht auch natürlich jetzt schon mit den Finanziers, ob die das nicht vorstrecken, die Mühle aus Sicherheit hinterlegen, damit man sozusagen nicht so viel Zeit dann nachher verliert von der Ordering, bis dass das geliefert wird und man sitzt dann quasi rundum und tut Däumchen drehen, weil die Mühle nicht nicht da ist. Ähm, natürlich arbeitet man auch im Permitting-Seite äh, äh, auf, auf der Neben- Linie, wobei hier der große Unterschied ist, wir sprechen hier von einer alten Mine, die ja äh, sozusagen äh, die, die die, die Mühle nur stillgelegt hat, aber nie aufgehört hat, quasi, die war immer auf, auf die, we can say it was always on care and maintenance. Yes. So, äh, aber damit man das neu jetzt wieder anfangen, muss man sozusagen das wieder in einen aktiven Status überführen. Und das braucht halt natürlich äh, einige Zeit. Sie wissen, Behörden brauchen auch äh, ihre, ihre Zeit, wo sie das dann dementsprechend bestätigen und der Stempel draufkommt, dass man jetzt wieder neu starten kann. So, und das ist eigentlich jetzt was, was großartig abläuft. So, und jetzt, wir haben auch dann noch viel gesprochen über den Aktienkurs. Wie gesagt, der Aktienkurs hat nicht wirklich performt, was allerdings auch nicht wirklich überraschend ist, denn wir sind in einem sehr frühen Status von, von diesem Goldmarkt. Und da geht als erstes alles natürlich in die Produzenten rein und nicht in die, in die Explorations- oder Development Companies. Äh, wir brauchen ein, zwei Quartale wahrscheinlich nur bei den Produzenten, die müssen ein, zwei gute Quartale hinlegen, wo der Cash auch dementsprechend Cashflow reinkommt, dass das dann die Leute sich auf die anderen Firmen dann äh, runterhandeln sozusagen und immer kleinere Firmen dann kaufen. Das ist der typische Zyklus, das haben wir 2006 bis 2011 gesehen oder 2004 bis 2011 gesehen, das war immer genau dasselbe. So läuft heute die Industrie. Sie sind allerdings meines Erachtens so weit fortgeschritten, dass Sie schon in der zweiten Hälfte dabei sein werden. Also das heißt, ich glaube, wenn dann vor allem natürlich dann die Finanzierung steht, wird dann den richtigen Lift auf gehen, wo es dann richtig die Aktie zulegen wird. Und was auch ein Grund war, warum die Aktie unter Druck war, ist, Sie haben ja, oder diese Firma wurde ja geschaffen mit Übernahme von anderen Firmen. Die, und zwei davon dieser Übernahmen wurden mit Aktien bezahlt. Und was einer nicht ganz oder damals oder nicht so bewusst war, ist, dass ein paar Leute von diesen, die damals mit Aktien bezahlt worden sind, auch Geld brauchen. Und die haben halt quasi dann auch teilweise bekannt oder auch nicht bekannt Aktien einfach in den Markt reinverkauft, weil die einfach das Geld braucht haben. Das ist natürlich auch, auch klar. Und dann hat man natürlich, bleibt nichts anderes übrig, dass ein Aktienkurs einfach nicht läuft, obwohl der Markt an sich in einem positiven Umfeld ist. Das Positive daran ist, die Aktie ist so niedrig, dass man sie jetzt quasi wirklich zu einem sehr, 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 sehr günstigen Preis kommt. Wie gesagt, ich habe meine erste Position gekauft, heißt nicht, dass ich nicht eine zweite Position kaufe und ich bin jetzt gespannt, wie in den nächsten Tagen der Aktienkurs läuft, denn wenn er so im Prinzip sich stabilisiert, könnte es wirklich sein, dass die Verkäufer draußen sind und dann haben wir jetzt einen guten Zeitpunkt, diese Aktie zu kaufen. So, das war's von Escort Resources Derek White, der auch sehr gut Deutsch spricht, zumindest alles <lacht> versteht, was ich jetzt sage. Und nachdem er nicht mir widersprochen hat, glaube ich, habe ich ganz gut zusammengefasst. Ja, das war's aus Vancouver, Oktober 2019. Tschüss und Baba. Tschüss. Thank you. Danke.
Do you say anything wrong? No. No. Oh, perfect. <laughs>